Monster Hunter Wilds is on its way, and at long last we have the very first footage. So let's dig in and start sorting the wheat from the chaff to uncover the hidden secrets of what's coming. So let's look at this opening scene. And wait a second. In this very first scene, we already get a promising glimpse of what looks like a returner. Whilst it is carefully hidden, we can see what looks like a Gendrome, an immensely popular fan favourite and desert monster lurking in the trees, ready to ambush the herbivores. With the seeming focus Wilds is going to have on social monsters and their paleo theme so far in this one scene, it's no surprise raptors would be a big thing to bring back. And straight away in the next shot, we get a big clue to a future monster. On the backs of these things, what are they, like juvenile Apsaros or something? Whatever, they're not important here. We can see these small kingfisher-like birds. To the untrained eye, they may not look like much, but by opening our third one, we can see the truth. In Iceborne, Garuga had a lot of kingfisher-like dives, and it's not unusual for them to base large monsters off the new endemic life. Great Jagras is based off the little geckos in the ancient forest and the wild spire. And in the original concept art for the game, we can see that there was originally going to be a giant bliss bill, for Rathalos to fight in a supremacy match for King of the Ancient Forest. Sadly, the bliss bill drone was cut before it could be implemented. But overall, this bodes very well for a brand new beak-based diving wyvern presumably bird or flying, to be a new foe to fight in Wilds. And if Wilds is going to have some of the cut content for World and perhaps Rise as well, maybe we'll get this giant Bliss Bill to fight as well. Next up, we get a pretty clear look at this Returner. Many useless cucks have since dismissed this large wingdrake-shaped thing as a wingdrake, but on closer look, we can clearly see that it's Steve, who will be returning to challenge Rathalos in the skies. With a brand new deserty savannery habitat for him to fight in, this will probably be his best entry into the series yet. I can't wait. And next- Zzz. Whoa, what was that? It looked like Desert Celtus. Let's just rewind and find out. Yup, there he is. Well, we're getting a big desert theme so far. So if he's back, then that must obviously mean that Desert Celtus Queen is as well. With Crimson Glow Valstrax in Rise, it's clear the developers aren't worried about needing the base species to add or return variations without them anymore. Pandora's box has truly been opened, and anyone can return. There's also like a storm or something in the, dis in the distance, so maybe that's why he's flying away. Hmm. In the next shot, we get a glimpse of the fringes of what seems to be a vast open desert. And I don't know who this dork is, but he's riding that thing from Star Wars. Boda? Boga? Whatever, it's not really important. Although one set of leaks did actually show its true name, which seems to be the pub. There were no leaks, and we don't actually know its name, and I'm sure we will find out when our All Father Capcom allows us to finally know, as is his ride. So let's keep calling it Boga or something. But more importantly as well, what's that fin sticking out of the sand? Clearly another big fan favourite, Cephadrome. Looks like he could be slated to return. We only get a glimpse of the fin, but it's looking promising. Sorry, Nibble Snarf, maybe in Portable 6. Then we get whatever these things are. Since when has Goss Harag lived in groups? And where's his sword? Clearly, the world obsession with nature, ecology, and groundedness has utterly ruined the true and pure we anime ness and pure fantasy aspect the games have absolutely always had since day one. A real shame. The game is almost certainly ruined. Sad. So, frustratingly, with all these sand harags blocking the way, we can barely see the real content, which is Tigrex, clearly hiding in the horde. Perhaps they're all running from him. There's also this big lightning storm, so, you know, Kirin's probably back or something. And in it, we can actually see that this guy is wearing low-rank pukey-pukey armor. So, okay, buddy, you keep on trying. <laughs> Rube. Boda lands on a petrified tree, and then we can see the final recognizable face of the trailer. A male Rathian. 
As he flies away, we can see what to the untrained eye comes across as a flock of migrating birds. But if we put this in reverse, then they're coming from the Rathalos. Huh. Weird bits floating off a monster? We've seen that before, haven't we? He's clearly got frenzy. And that must mean Gormagala is back to not be included in the story in any meaningful way. But before we leave the trailer, is there anything else worth talking about in these screenshots? No, I can't see anything worth discussing here. So we're building up this new roster pretty quickly, but who else could be in? Well, why don't we look at the logo? As is known, the amount of dragon heads in the logo refers to the generation it's getting released in, and the world logo is a reference to the story of the five in lore. So all this means that just from the logo, we can reliably predict the story characters, gameplay roster gimmicks and DLC just from looking at it. The dragon-like head does imply that there will be some form of dragon in the game. Huh. Staying on brand, I see. But what else? Well, if we take the way the circles are and just shift them around slightly... Whoa. Does that spell... Monobloss? I don't think we need to look any further to find our next returner. Pretty crazy stuff. In fact, if we look a little bit closer, we can actually see the full list of returning monsters. Wow. Half the roster uncovered already, and we're just on the first trailer. Pretty incredible stuff. But what about some new monsters, hmm? Well, if you know where to look, there are some clues. First, there's this leaked screenshot. That explains both the ice monsters reappearing, what with this snow biome, but most importantly, this brand new and never before seen unknown wyvern. Right now, you may think we know nothing, but look at the wings and the feet. Very similar to Kezu. Hmm. Capcom have done this sort of thing before as well. Puki Puki and Palumu shared the same sort of wing design as well too, in World. But for this, it seems people are always asking when will we get Giganox or Kezu coming back? Or when will we get to see Kezu Whelps, or Zenith Kezu, or Super Giga Kezu? But it seems Takuda is silencing them all and creating a brand new wyvern. For now, we'll call it Wyvern Incognitos. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Womp womp, no water combat. Hmm. Unless... These structures the unnamed mount is leaping off look suspiciously like barnacles. Or lungworms. And that waterhole? What if it's not a waterhole, but a blowhole? Monster Hunter can often borrow from mythology and the notion of a giant whale like Leviathan isn't uncommon. For a game to surpass World and Zora, why not a giant whale of which the very land is the whale itself? It all makes sense. And that's why the six drops in the trailer are so much like rain. With the desert and savannah landscape, famous for their lack of water, they're trying to do the old ruggy pulley from beneath our feetsy weetsies. Water combat is back and a giant whale monster with it. Fully confirmed, let's roll. Thanks for watching. And thanks to my patrons, the Supra Stupa, Sam Burgo, K Sandum, Holder, Nickname3110, Erengar Steiny, Flygon's Archives, Hui Hui, Original Username, Evely, Howleth, Archazor Queen, Seth Fake Last Name, Zesa, Dodekablos, and Bazugazu, Bachuhatsu, Bachumatsu, for their ongoing support to the channel. If you would also like to help, then be sure to send that like button to a different plane of existence, and subscribe as well. The Unnatural History Channel is your one-stop shop for all the freshest and most accurate lore you could possibly imagine, and the hottest scoops of news on Monster Hunter Wild. So be sure to sign up if you want more.